So the um, we, we've had some questions. We'll answer those questions nearer to the end, but we'll start off with the first things. The first question, the most basic question, what does a career in medicine really involve? And I say it's a basic question, but it is kind of complicated. I'll do the easy part. I'm going to talk about the basic structure of medicine, what it looks like in medical school, house officer, registrar, moving forward. And then if you guys want to give your spin on things, the real interesting things that people don't really expect when they're going in, when they're starting to work and the things that you only really learn on the job. So when you are a uh, high school student looking at the options, obviously you're entering to medical school and there's a few different pathways actually to enter into medical school. And most people only know of one pathway, which is get into medical school through the first year pre-med. Uh, or some people will know of the second option, which is graduate entry, which is you do a degree first and then you enter in. But actually, there are multiple other pathways uh, as well that are kind of considered special categories. We're not going to go into that in too much detail. You get into medical school, six years of medical school, uh, uh, where you're, where learning, you're learning anatomy, about. physiology, you're gaining clinical experience, working full time in a hospital. And then you graduate uni university to enter into the health workforce. And when you've entered into the health workforce, you are what's called a house officer or a house surgeon. And that's because originally you used to live at the hospital. Mm -hmm. That's It was your home. And uh, you are a junior doctor. You are working in different departments, rotating around different departments, seeing uh, which specialty uh, uh, you like or the different types of learning that you get from each department. As a junior doctor, your task is, your, your job role is very task focused. So there's a lot of execution of plans, a lot of facilitation of the work environment. Um, not so much of that rigorous real problem solving diagnostic stuff that we see house doing or anything like that. It's a lot more sort of just um, making sure that the, that the, wheel of the healthcare system is turning according to what your seniors want things to do. Take the step beyond that and the next step is called a registrar. And a registrar is a term that's used for someone that effectively is has more responsibilities and is learning more than the house officer would be. Now, registrar is actually quite a broad term in a way because it encompasses multiple different stages of someone's career development. You can either be a non-training registrar or you could be a training registrar. And what that training refers to is actually whether you're on a specialty training program or not. So if you wanna be a cardiologist, you need to enter into the cardiology training program. And some training programs are extremely competitive to the point where no one in the country will enter or one or two or, one or, two or something like, I think neurosurgery, I think there hasn't been any New Zealand ent uh, entrance into neurosurgery training program in, in, from New Zealand in like 10 years or something crazy like that. I, I might be mistaken, but something uh, ridiculous like that. So often specialties that are surgical or subsurgical, and by subsurgery, I mean they are very specialized um, surgeons like surgeons for the eye or um, cardiothoracic surgery or vascular, which is blood vessels. So those types of specialties tend to be more competitive to enter into. And generally speaking, medical specialties tend to be less competitive to enter into. It doesn't mean that one is better than the other, by the way, it just is the way that the selections work. And then once you are on a training program, you are sort of in a way, uh, sort of fast track to becoming a specialist. And that's when you learn a lot more about that topic, like the heart or the kidneys or whatever specialty you're going into. And that process can be anywhere from, as, uh, I think the shortest training program is four years, which is GP is four years, is it? Or five years? Five, I think. Five years? Okay, so are there any four year training programs actually? Uh, not that I can think. I think it's five, five. Three years, is yeah. GP three years. Oh, okay. It's three years. Yeah, but you have to do your first two years of house office. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you, no matter what, you'd have to, yeah. So Sorry. you can only do, no, 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 good point. Um, so you have to do at least two years of house officering, which is the most junior of doctors. And then you can, you're eligible to apply for a training program. But that doesn't mean that you get in. Now, when I was a, a, 
a student in high school or even early medical school, I thought, man, if you don't get on the first try, you're like a loser. But actually, that's like the norm. There's very few people that are getting in after the minimum two years. I mean, there are some specialties that are a lot easier to do that for. But when you get to even a little bit more competitive, uh, the degrees, uh, the programs, some people will be trying to get into that for, you know, three, four years um, attempts, just getting the required amount of experience. And it, it just takes that long to get enough experience and get that much reputation and connection and have enough kind of um, foundation to be accepted on. And then after that, so we're looking at the training program, which can be very long, you know, six, seven years for surgical training where you, after that, could do something called a fellowship where you are going to a different location specializing in the particular area of that specialty that you really want to get more hands-on with. So for example, if you're an orthopedic uh, trainee and you want to be specialized in spine surgery, you might go to a, a place that does really good spine surgery and then you might do a spine fellowship where you are just getting lots and lots of volume of, of practice doing that. Now, not every single specialty requires a fellowship. So just as a recap, we've got high school, medical school, and then after medical school, we've got at least two years of house officer. And then we've got an unknown amount of years as a non-training registrar before you get onto your training program. And then you've got your training years, which is three to multiple years. And then you've got potentially a fellowship. And then you are what's called a consultant, but specifically you're a junior consultant technically. So even then there's there's a little bit of super, slight more supervision time, it's despite the fact that you are incredibly qualified and incredibly good at what you do. I mean, you've dedicated your life to this. And then you are the big, big boss. You're the, the consultant, the doctor that everyone thinks of becoming when they want to be a doctor. That's really looking at a minimum really of sort of seven years after graduating, six, seven years after graduating, maybe up to even 10, 15 years after graduating, uh, you would be that consultant figure. And some people will take even longer than that. Some people will take other paths. Uh, and that's in a nutshell. A junior doctor is actually a term which is used for anyone who is, effectively, they're just not a consultant, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I. Do we consider trainees as junior doctors? Because I feel like there's senior trainees and they're not really junior doctors, but I think technically, mm -hmm. would they I think be when you do your fellowship, is that's when, you, when is the cutoff is. The cutoff, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, the term junior doctor it doesn't always mean that you're super fresh. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, you, you can you can have been have been working as a doctor, be a trainee. You can be ex incredibly experienced at what you do, and you could still be a junior doctor seven years after graduating. Um, and then uh, the senior doctor is really take, um, reserved for, um, as Liz just said, either fellows or consultants, um, the bosses. So that's just a summary of the medical career in terms of just the basic steps. If you had any questions about what I just said, just leave them in the comments. I'll be checking them constantly.